Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our very first edition of The Map here in the Duff TV studios. My name is Tubes Taylor and as I say, welcome. We are going to be covering two great leagues in southern Tasmania, the SFL and the Old Scholars Football Association, thanks to the Tasmanian Football Council. I'm joined today here by my co-host Aaron Roberts. Welcome Aaron. Thanks very much. Great to be here. The very first map here in the headquarters of the Duff Studios in North Hobart. It's exciting. It is very exciting and it is great to be here. Of course, we must thank our sponsors who have come on board this year, Furphy, our beer sponsor, but we are looking for more sponsors. So if you've got a small business out there and you'd like to jump on board, get in contact with us here at the map. Now, it was the opening round this week and it was Uni beating St Virgins by 157 points. OHA beat Richmond, last year's Premiers, by 26 points and Hutchins beat Dosa by 13 points down there at the Queenborough Oval. Of course, we were out at the bike track watching the St. Virgil's Saints take on University, and we saw a few highlights out there, Aaron. So here are the uni boys led out by their captain, Grant King. A couple of surprise packets for me in this team, Aaron. Kester Takiyama, who broke his arm last year, he's running out, and Ethan Brock, of course, who come up from Kingborough there. But what surprises me is right here, why do you leave your team out as the runner? What's going on there, mate? Maybe there's confusion. They're very small change rooms down there under the grandstands. So Ash Bennett <laughs> running out, who used to play there at Claremont. It's good to see the St Virgil's Footy Club still running around. And your mate? Yeah, little Paddy Mitts in there. He's a feisty little bugger, but uh, he's one of their uh, club club champs. A little bit of tackling practice from the boys. I imagine that they know they'll be chasing a fair bit of footy. You wouldn't. That doesn't happen anywhere else in society, does that move there? <laughs> So this is Ethan Brock, the boy from down at Kingborough. He kicks the first goal of the match, and it was a ripper. A beautiful kick there, straight over the goal line. He had a great way to start his career at the Rainbows. And they all got around him. Another goal coming up here. That's Blake Waite, the number 11, that uh, his dad, Stefan, is the coach of the twos as King gets his handball away. A good little string of passage of play here from the Rainbows as Woodhead comes bang from 50 and sends it goalward. I think that 50 metre line might yeah, be a, a bit more 35. It's 42 and a half, I think, <laughs> technically. We went and measured it a few weeks ago. And oh. undisciplined oh. stuff there from Sam Shivers. Yeah, that's Mitson getting floored. And he might have chirped a few times too. I imagine he would have. So a free kick going the way of the Saints there in the middle of the ground. Undisciplined stuff. But we managed to catch up with Ben Beams at quarter time. All right, good, good start. All right, really like the honour honor and the leads up forward. All right. Um, back line be be mindful be brave let's 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 get the ball out this side this quarter oh we've got a bit of a breeze got a bit of a breeze but we need to work just as hard as we did that quarter everyone's had their moments boys everyone's had their moments but we've got to play three quarters of team first footy Go again now. that's all i asked before the game wasn't it yep. if it. we can come off and i can't pick six best players that's what i'm happy about we've got 22 guys that play their role all right, apply pressure, tackle when they need to tackle, stand under the high ball when you need to stand under the high ball and help your teammate out. I'm a happy coach. So in the second quarter, University came out firing after a well-measured speech there from Ben Beams. As we see Josh Fogarty doing great work through the back line here, and that's where Ben Beams wants, to, wants him to keep running and uh, keep going. But a brilliant goal here. As we said, Ben, ben Beams said, we want you to be bold, and I think Josh Fogarty really took it on board as we see that man there kicking it down to Jack Tammons, who took a good mark in front of goals, and he goes back and drills. I think it's his first goal of the game here in the second quarter. But University, as we said earlier, run out victors by quite a margin here. But as I said, Aaron, it's great to see St Virgil's back out on the park. Yeah, it's really important St Virgil's a season or so, or so ago was struggling to get numbers. And now they're back going again. They've got two teams in the park reserves and seniors. And maybe for them that's the most important thing because once you fold, it's usually curtains for a football club. Hard to come back, isn't it? Alrighty, so there we go. That was the vision that we caught out there at the bike track. Now, going through the goal kickers for University, Chris Howard kicked seven, Aaron. Seven goals for Chrissy Howard. Ashwood had uh, kicked four. Tammons four, Mark Albury kicked four, the recruit from down there at Kingborough, Ethan Brock, he kicked three, Richie Douglas, one of my favourite players out there, Reese Douglas, sorry, Reese, uh, he kicked two, one which we might be highlighting a little bit later in our coverage. Sam Shivers kicked two, uh, Livingston kicked two, Lonigan and Housing kicked one for St Virgil's. 
Menzi and Sutcliffe had two apiece. Of course, Davey, Mahoney and Morgan, and apparently Gill was discredited once. I'm not sure who didn't kick one of those, Davey, Mahoney and Morgan, but Gill kicked one as well. Uh, the best players probably out there at St Virgil's who battled all day. Uh, Callan Sutcliffe was very good, Pat Midson was good, Brad Weston was good as well. Um, for University, it was a recruit, Nathan Hardy, who played very well, Marcus Gardner, Chrissy Harrell with seven goals, of course, and the captain, Grant King, played the game of his life. Well done to Kinga. All right, Aaron, you were out at the Claremont New Norfolk game. Oh, and a commanding lead for Claremont shown on the new scoreboard, which are going to be proliferated across all grounds <laughs> in Tasmania. <laughs> Everyone this is seems to be getting it, Aaron. Absolutely. Marcus Parker showing some of his skills by managed to snowball onto that one. Quickly turns around. Marcus Parker, Norky, former, former since Virgil's player as well. And now he's had several seasons Finney Norfolk looks for Wardlaw. He can't quite mark it. He's an important player. And Claremont able to actually get this one out. It's a nice patch to play coming up here for the Montes are able to run the ball back out of the halfback flank. Yeah, this is uh, the fella that come from Leighton Football Club here delivering the footy down to the forward line. That's Luke Potter delivering to your big man. Ah, big Clayton. Yeah. Different colours for Clayton's been seen. Needs a red well, stripe there yeah, somewhere. He's, he's just missing the red, isn't he? But yeah. as we see here, a 50 metre penalty paid against uh, one of the players. Yeah, I think it was there. Rowan Heron who ran across the mark. But watch, hap look what happens next. There's Little bit of conversation here, I believe. We can't lip read, but we'll look. There's a 50 metre penalty. No, oh, there's a bit of a comment. Someone said something. Oh, dearie me. I think it was uh, Benny Lovell. He's about to be shown the miscuit and lettuce. Yep. And, and he says, You can go and make a bit of. There uh, it is. Yep. They're all going to have a bit of salad. Off you go. Have 15 minutes. Oh, and the run and of the shame for Benny, for Benny Lovell there. So, how long has he spent off? 15 minutes. Well, and laugh anyway. So there's a goal to Clayton, one of his six for the day. He's a big lad, isn't he, Nick Clayton? So you see some of the people up there, who we got in the balcony? Not long enough for me to figure out who it was. Now this is nicely one out of the middle there, looks like Wardlaw and New Norfolk, who struggled throughout the middle of the day. On this occasion was Parker, who kicked two goals. This is his second and important player for New Norfolk, but probably just not enough out of the middle, but one of their few victories out of the middle of the ground there. He's an ominous the man up forward, isn't he, big Marcus Parker? Oh, look out, we've got to Exel, David Camerick there for the Mont, just discussing tactics, there's Camerick. This is an example of where Claremont won throughout the day. They were able to win most contested situations and they are able to get the ball quickly forward. Although it's some nice work there. A brilliant tackle there laid by Will Byers to, to create the turnover, but uh, Norfolk ended up with the footy. So once again, you know, if they love it when they get a bit of space, so used to playing on the big ground at Boyer, and this is an example of when they get a little bit of space, they can be really dangerous. However, on that occasion, the kick not great to Parker. Yeah, Brodie Lang's done a really great job for Claremont over the years, just running across the half-back line, delivered beautifully up to the BMX boy. Here he is, your favourite. Yep, Del Carmen. He's a, he's a little jet that comes up from the under-18s and yeah. is playing senior footy now, so it's great to see him. And, and Tyler Bowden kicks one of his, I think he kicked three. Yeah, he kicked three goals. Tyler Bowden's had a really good start to the season. He's a very difficult matchup, although a little slow. He's certainly a very a big unit. There's Dill Carmen again as we look up on the scoreboard. Claremont well and truly in control halfway through this third turn. Oh, look out there. That's young Piercy. He's been a player for both Brighton and he's coming to the ranks of senior footy this season. We're going to see some footage of his hair throughout the day's play. Look out for that. What I have noticed in the footage that we've caught here at Duff TV is there's a lot of headbands getting yeah. around. It's like the mid-1980s, like <laughs> Spandau Ballet are going to come out he, again. He doesn't even need a headband, this no, fella. No, no. Well, this, you know, you've got to be cool. Remember when you were cool, Tubes? Yeah, I used to be cool. Here come the Mont once again. A bit of space through the middle of the ground. Yeah, it looks like a push in the back. Oh no, it's going to go the other yeah, way. Jackie so Jackie Cross and yeah. a little overzealous. So New Norfolk now for half back. One of their attacking moves late in the day. Once again, that man again, Parker. Just a little bit too good for Byers, who had the front position. Parker's body position was just outstanding. As I said, he's very, very ominous and a great delivery there down to his man, down at full forward, who was in at Duff TV Studios earlier yeah. this week with the... SFL press conference. Yeah, young Murray there. He did a good job on that occasion, managed to get a goal. But here's the Mont again, showing their speed through the middle of Abbotsfield Park. It just pops over the back here. It cleans onto Cassidy, and Cassidy finds Bowden, or Bowden, I should say, in the pocket again. He's going to go back, kick another one for himself. 
and late in the day, Parker again showing he's got such a great set of hands, but he had to come a long way up the ground to get that mark. And unfortunately, just didn't have enough helpers as the day went on. Although there was a, a few goals late here, and there's Murray again showing some skills, didn't he? Oh, and then Wardlaw just <laughs> copped one. He's copped one for the eight, from the 18 year old Percy. Yeah. Percy knew straight away. You can yeah. see it as he hit him. He said, yeah, I knew. It's a bit like happens when at like 11 o'clock at night you're caught stealing the chocolate out of the fridge as a teenager. Mum walks in and you got that look in your face and Wardlaw kicks a goal to finish late in the game. You're going to run through the best players and the goal kickers for us. Yeah, absolutely. First with the goal kickers for the Mont, who had a comfortable victory in the end. Nick Clayton with six, Tyler Bowden and also Lukey Potter kicked three each. Both players coming up a good week after kicking five last week. And for the Eagles who came down the valley, Blair Wardlow with three and Marcus Parker kicked a, kicked a couple of goals for New Norfolk. Best players though for the month, Scotty Jones, Nick Clayton and Marty Allison were contributors throughout the day for the Mini Norfolk. Jacob Daly and Ashley Burgess and Rowan Heron, who I saw a game of cricket in a grand final a couple of weeks ago with Stuff TV, he played a good game off the halfback. Well, there we go. That's the results for this week in the SFL. Uh, we also, of course, have our sponsor, Furphy, who are going to be giving away a carton of beer every week to the play of the week. And let's have a look who's won it this week. So the ball comes in to the forward line. Nice strong mark taken down here by the Rainbows, and they look to switch play. Now, Ben Beams did talk about being brave. The ball comes out here to Fenton, who goes up. I think that's Rinaldi that takes the mark. He goes long and drives it up to Reese Douglas, the barnacle, who handles quickly over to the youngster Blake Waite with quick hands. Reese Douglas ducks around the opponent there and kicks goal of the week. And he, ladies and gentlemen, has won the carton of Furphy. Thanks to my man out there, Brad Upton from Furphy. A whole carton of this stuff coming to you, Reese Douglas. How do you collect it, Reese? You get in contact with Duff TV uh, through our Facebook side, of course. Alrighty, next week's games in the Old Scholars. We've got some Virgils versus Dosa out there at the bike track again. I don't know how they get two home games in a row out there at St Virgils. The University Football Club are playing OHA at University and the Duff TV cameras will be out at the Richmond Hutchins game at Richmond, last year's uh, grand finalists going head to head out there at Richmond. So that'll be a great game. We'll have some vision for you next week. Aaron in the SFL. Yeah, in the SFL, really interesting match. Could be a prelude for something bigger in the year. Claremont versus Lindisfarne at Abbotsfield. You know, folks, Sorrell, I mean, another intriguing game. Signet will take on Humble down in Signet. And the game where Duff TV will be covering in the Southern Football League, we out at Brighton as the Robins will take on the Hobart Tigers and uh, Dodgers Ferry will have a bite. Yeah, well done. All right, that is it from us here at The Map. Thank you very much to the Tasmanian Football Council, of course, for tuning in. Uh, Furphy, who have come on board as our Player of the Week sponsor. And if you've got a small business out there or even a big business and you want to come on board as a sponsor, please get in touch with us here at Duff TV. Thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Tubes Taylor. Aaron Roberts, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. We will see you next week here at The Map. Here we go. Big kick here in the context of this game. Cassidy backs back. Chance at the back. Parker. Spin it around the corner. Parker has kicked the goal. Marcus Parker. How are you feeling, Premiers? Oh, mate, it's an unbelievable feeling, mate. Yeah, there's a lot of hard work that's put into this. and oh, yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a big moment. You know, I know we won the game fairly easy, but you know, Hutchins were good early on, mate. We had to just adjust a few little things, but there's a lot of hard work, mate, in this group. They're a, they're a resilient group, and they've got what they deserve, mate.